Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. What's going on with you? It's your old pal Joe checking in with you on a motherfucking Monday, people. How about that? We're back at it again. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing better than you ever thought you possibly could be doing. And if you're not, hey, as always, that's okay, but get your shit together, okay? Holidays coming up, maybe you're taking it easy. Don't be a bitch. Ramp it up into the holiday season. Do more than you've ever done in your life. You know, eat so much turkey and love so many people, you can't fucking stand it. Do all that shit and have some fun. Hey, everybody, real quick, uh, I once again would like to thank everybody who has been listening to, whether you've been streaming my album on Spotify or maybe Apple Music or perhaps on Pandora or maybe you bought it from Amazon. I would like to say thank you. I really appreciate it. Also, if you've watched it on YouTube, hey, fucking A, I appreciate the hell uh, out of that too. And it seems like some of y'all that have been finding me on YouTube are, are checking out the podcast a little bit more. So, hey, welcome to it, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for checking this shit out. And uh, I hope I hope you're having a good time with it. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I just come here and talk shit. But you guys already know that. Uh, anyway, what do I have coming up? I have some shows coming up at some point in time. I'll be in... <laughs> I still haven't looked up this fucking date yet. I will be in Cincinnati at Go Bananas. It's December 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. I'll be there all weekend with Dave Waite. So if you're up in Cincinnati, come through. Even if you're near Cincinnati, come through. I'll be featuring up there. Uh, Also, I'll be in Dubuque, Iowa with my good buddy Aaron Weber in January sometime. I think it's like the second weekend in January. You can find all my dates at joekellycomedy.com because I can't remember them too well. And I know it'd be easier if I did and just told you where I'll be, but, you know, I make you do put in a little effort, people. <laughs> also, I'll be, uh, we got a show in Flint, Michigan. I'll be back for the uh, holiday season, December 23rd. That'll be at Blackstone's Smokehouse, downtown Flint. We're starting at 8 o'clock. There is a $5 cover at the door. You can pay cash or they can put it on your tab while you're drinking your booze and having fun. But uh, if you're up in Michigan, if you're in the Flint area, come through that show. That one will be, uh, that'll be fun. I got some good friends coming up from from Detroit to tell some jokes with me. And it's going to be a fucking blast. I'm really looking forward to that show. So if you're around the mitten... Uh, come through. We should uh, we should be having some fun out there. All right. That's all my bullshit. It's out of the way now, people. Now we can get into the fucking fun. What'd you do with your week, my friend? Did you have fun? Did you do something productive with yourself? I hope you did. You should be doing that every week. But uh, last week, especially. No particular reason. Just, you know, put in the effort. What the fuck happened with me? I I had some shows last week, people. Had some shows. Shot a trailer for a movie. It's going to be an independent film. We're looking for uh, funding for it. So shot a little trailer for a movie. We're going to make Might be making an old slasher type horror movie. So that'll be fun. I did that on Wednesday, right? Did that on Wednesday. Most of Wednesday afternoon. And then I had a show Wednesday night at... uh, Fuck, I can't even remember the goddamn place. I couldn't remember it Wednesday night. I went to the wrong fucking place, people. I had a show at some brewery, but I went to some completely other place on the other side of Atlanta. I don't know why. (laughs) I just had it in my head that that's where I was supposed to be. And here's the fucked up thing, right? The show is starting at, like... I want to say 7.30 was the start time for the show on Wednesday, right? I go to the wrong fucking place. But I get there a little bit before 7 or like right at 7. So it's like a half an hour before the show is supposed to start, you know. And uh, nobody who is on the show is there. You know what I mean? Like it didn't click the fact that I was the only one there, you know. It was, fuck, I feel like I might have been there before seven. Anyway, I just didn't put two and two together. And for some reason, I thought it was outside. So I go outside and sit down. And it's like there's a microphone and some speakers. So I'm just like, fucking hey, I must be in the right place. 
Everybody else must be late. It can't possibly be me. I could never be wrong. Everyone's just late. So I'm sitting there for maybe 15, 20 minutes, you know? And I keep looking back at the message and at the poster, and I'm just not putting it together that I'm at the wrong fucking place. I couldn't, I couldn't make sense out of it. The fucking mic stand is what threw me off. Once I saw the sound system, I was like, okay, baby, we're in the right fucking place. There's no way. There's no way I'm not where I'm supposed to be, you know. But uh, sure as shit, I was, uh, I was not in the right place. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> See, when I say we were shooting a uh, movie trailer, I mean... We were mainly smoking weed all day while people set up lights. So maybe that had something to do with why I was in the wrong fucking place. But hey, I figured it out at some point. I think I really looked at the poster. I think I finally really looked at it and I was like, why would it be like, why would Left Hand Brewing present comedy at Red's Beer Garden? You know, I figured it out. It took a minute. I'm a late bloomer sometimes. But I still made it to the show. Right on time, too, people. Right on time. Like two or three minutes before I was supposed to go on. Hey, fucking A. I was there, baby. So nobody could get too mad. You know? Great time. Got lost. Still had fun at wherever I was. Because I still don't entirely remember where I ended up. And uh, But there was a show. And I told some jokes. Hey, fucking A. That was a good time. Also did some shows at the, uh, the old Punchline this weekend, huh? The old Punchline Comedy Club here in Atlanta. I got to do some shows with uh, Christina P. Christina Pazitsky, I believe is how you say the last name. I could be completely wrong about that. But she goes by Christina P. You may know her from the Your Mom's House podcast, right? With Tom Segura and Christina P. They do the, the podcast together. Those shows were fun. I only did Friday. But the shows were fun. They were both packed out. It's, uh, what a fun time. What a great, she's got a great crowd. You know, those people were fun. They were loose. They were into the jokes. They were there to have fun. Not to, nobody was really super disruptive. So that's always good. You know, <laughs> ain't that a, a great fucking thing, but the shows went well. It's fantastic. I haven't done, I guess I haven't done like a club weekend in a minute. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you meet strange, not strange people, but people, I've had so many people tell me things that they shouldn't be telling me after a comedy show. You know what I mean? And I don't know why, you know, I don't know why this lady, right? Had, I think she may have been at the show by herself. All right. And that's fine. Hey, I, when, I, if, when I was going to comedy shows, I'd go by myself too. I don't need somebody sitting next to me so I can laugh at stand-up comedy. You know what I mean? So I respect that. But uh, man, she came up. She's like, it was a great show. You all were so, everybody was so wonderful. Everybody was so fun. You know, thank you. It's been great. It's been fun. And I'm like, yeah, that's real cool. You know, I'm glad you had fun. And uh, you know, you enjoyed yourself. You know, must be a big Christina P. fan, all that fun stuff. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I haven't had too much fun since my husband died. <laughs> and it's just like, whoa, God damn it, lady. <laughs> like, why do you got to bring, you know, I don't, at the end of the day, listen. I don't want to hear about that shit. I don't want to hear about your dead relatives not after a comedy show i'm feeling good i had a good set everyone's having fun together everyone's in a good mood and you got to come up and go hey my husband uh, is dead and it's like oh okay just suck the the wind right out of your sails you know and it's it's a tough situation to get away from <laughs> you know what i mean because can you go, hey, I don't give a shit about your dead husband? Is that okay to do? I didn't do that. I would like to have done that. That seems like the alpha dog fucking move to do. You know what I mean? To go, hey, I don't fuck your loneliness. I don't care about it. <laughs> 
Maybe you shouldn't have put all your eggs in one basket. One basket that was going to die. Maybe you <laughs> should have had a couple husbands. <laughs> then you wouldn't be at a comedy show bumming me the fuck out, you know? <laughs> Polyamory, people. It's a beautiful way to, uh, you know, that way when people die, you're not alone in making it other people's problem, you know? Ah, she was a great lady, but man, it's the shit that people do like that just fucking sucks the wind right out of you. And it's like, why do you feel the need to tell me that your husband died? Why can't you just go, hey, I had fun, great show, you know, I hope I see you again sometime. But no, you got to go, hey, great show, you know, real fun, hope I see you around sometime. And also, this is the most fun I've had since my husband died. And what are you supposed to say? Because then she wants to talk about how he died and everything. You know? She's bringing it up so she can unravel. Well, she already gave the feature. Oh, what was her name? She was fucking, she was fun as hell. Oh, man. I'm blanking on her name. Something O'Donnell. Fuck. She, Chase. Chase O'Donnell. She was, uh, I saw her. <laughs> she was the feature for the show, right? She was standing over by the door because she had some posters and stickers and shit. But I saw the lady who's like, hey, my my husband's dead. I saw her talking to Chase for probably 15, 20 minutes. So I already knew kind of what was going on. But I was like, well, she'll get it all out on her. And I won't have to hear about whatever she's talking about. But then, uh, you know, once she ended up, Chase kind of got herself away from her. She fucking beelined it to me and go, hey, real fun show. My husband's dead. You know, so I appreciate it. I appreciate it more than all these people because my husband died. <laughs> it's so weird, man. I did a show in California like years ago. I can't remember where. It wasn't L.A. It was like uh, Green Mountain, maybe. Something Mountain. I think Mountain was in the city name. And uh, same shit happened, man. You get up and you go, hey, at a... Fun show, everybody. Great job. And some lady's like, yeah, that was real fun. I found out I had cancer or I found out I have cancer last week. So this is really just what I needed. And it's like, God damn it. Why? Why? <laughs> Listen, I understand we all have tragedies in our life. And there is a time and a place for it. I'm not saying that I wouldn't listen to somebody talk about, you know, their husband dying or their bout with cancer. But I don't know you. I just spent 15, 20 minutes talking about my dick. And you feel like, hey, he'll care that I have cancer. <laughs> I don't understand the, the logic, you know. Sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. And maybe because, uh, maybe with comedy, because people assume that you're being vulnerable up there. And maybe comedy is a very vulnerable act. Maybe people feel like they can be a little bit more vulnerable with you, which again, I appreciate. I'm glad that people, I'm glad people feel like they can open up to me in that way without really knowing me. You know what I mean? That's a great thing, but like, God damn it. <laughs> you gotta bum me out. And it's like, you know, some people, I swear to God, if they didn't have tragedy in their lives, they'd have nothing to talk about. They'd have no reason to live if there wasn't, if it wasn't just fucking tragic all the time. You know what I mean? And we all got problems, people. Bad shit happens to everybody all the fucking time. But, uh, you know, just try not to make it other people's problem. You know, there's a time and a place for it. And maybe after a comedy show isn't like immediately, you know what I mean? It's not like everybody wandered out and like, you know, we formed some kind of connection and like, hey, you want to stay and have a drink? You stay and have a drink. It's like, okay, cool. Let me know more about you now. And you'd be like, well, you know, I just really had a fun time at the comedy show. You know, my husband died. And so it's like, oh, shit. Okay. Now we can have that moment. But instead, just right, right in the middle of the fun momentum, you want to come in and go, Ah, I see you're riding the fun train, huh? Well, choo-choo, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> My husband's dead. <laughs> the train just, the fun train just flips over, it catches on fire, you know? So now no one's having any fun. You got a dead husband and I got to hear about it. <laughs>
<laughs> Put yourself in my situation, lady. I understand your husband's dead, but imagine being me and having having to hear about it. <laughs> and not really caring. <laughs> Not a hundred percent, you know. I feel bad shit happens. I feel bad for people, you know. My uh, I, uh, my buddy had somebody close to him die last week, you know. So I feel for him, you know. I'll check in with him, but not in a comedy show, <laughs> you know. Really, who's <laughs> who's worse off in that situation? That lady who's now going to probably be alone forever. Or me, the guy who's having a great time most of his life because <laughs> he doesn't have to hear about people's husbands dying. But as soon as you bring it up, it bums me out. Anyway, the shows were great. Christina was great. Christina P. Uh, Chase O'Donnell was absolutely fantastic. It was a fun night. I haven't done the punchline in forever, so it was a fun fucking show. If you were there, hey, thanks for uh, coming through. It wasn't my show, but thanks for coming through anyway, you know? So there was my weekend, people. Let's get into maybe some fun stuff now. Let's try and have some fun. I've been rambling for a minute already. Okay. Uh, This just fucking blew my mind, people. There are some dogs in the world that have more money than I'll ever have, you know? And maybe you too. Maybe you don't know how money works that well. And maybe you're in the same situation as me where, you know, all of a sudden you start getting a little bit of money. And it's like, wow, this is cool. And then all of a sudden it goes, where to go? You know, that's <laughs> apparently you need to be a fucking German shepherd. You know, it was, there's a dog. Okay. There's a dog called Gunther four. I saw this on Instagram. Gunther four is this dog's name and it's worth like 300 and so 300, an estimated $324 million people, a fucking dog. You know what I mean? A fucking dog has $324 million, it has maids, it's making uh, real estate deals, I almost said reality deals, but I mean, real estate, this dog's in real estate, buying Madonna's house in Miami, selling homes elsewhere, you know, flipping the houses, (laughs) it's fucking, it's fucking insane. I don't, okay, the lady died. This is the most fascinating thing, okay? In case you would like, go to dogtrophy.com sometime in case you ever want to kill yourself. If you ever feel like putting a bullet in your head, go to dogtrophy.com and realize that there are dogs who have better lives than you and I will ever have, you know? And not because of the money, you understand? A dog is already... 99.99% of the time, very, very happy. All right? Because that's what life life is about. It's about happiness, okay? So they already have it made in my book. They're happy most of the time, but now they got to be rich too. Anyway, if you're ever looking at that gun on the nightstand and you're just thinking, man, today's the day. I just don't have it in me. I just don't have it in me, but I wish I could. I wish I could put the gun in my mouth and blow the top of my skull off, just go to dogtrophy.com, and boy, oh boy, that gun will not be in your mouth faster. It it won't be. It'll be immediately in your mouth. You will kill yourself (laughs) almost immediately. (laughs) Because it will make you feel like a failure, you know? (laughs) Anyway, so this is Gunther for the richest animal in the world. Not even the richest dog. He takes the cake. He's the Conor McGregor of the animal world, you know? Did you know that between 12 and 27% of pet owners leave a will, okay? So that's about a, you know, about a quarter, about a quarter percent of pet owners leave a will. On average, on average, pets inherit about, inherit about $30,000 and some become millionaires after their deaths. Average is a salary. 30 grand is a salary if you aren't doing well. I know because that's about how much I make. (laughs) 
So that's the average for dogs is, you know, a salary for an idiot just trying to get through life, you know? So that's, okay, there's one bullet. <laughs> but anyway, the fucking dog, the Gunther, he inherited the dog from his dad or some shit like that. The Austrian Countess Carlotta Libenstein. What is a countess? How do they get money? Is that like a queen, an Austrian queen? I probably should have looked this up a little bit more. But it looks like they left. she left the money... Okay, and uh, yeah, and okay, I'm just reading this now and not even supplying any, I'm just fucking nodding, going yeah into a microphone, this is a great part of the, or the part of the podcast, anyway, the dog is very rich and I feel like a failure, but uh, you know, what the fuck, whatever a countess is, died in 1992, left all of her property to her dog, Gunther III, and later his son, Gunther IV, inherited the fortune from him. You know, so she left it to the... That's that's how people keep money around, is just passing it through the family. Bro, you should have to give that money up. The German Shepherd has its own maid and butler and several people who take care of him. He travels from one home to another with a luxury car and enjoys his custom pool in the summer months. His lifestyle is the epitome epitome of luxury, sophistication, and wealth. Gunther Four has been auctioned off and offered $1.1 million for a rare white truffle it won in 2001. I don't understand. How are you buying things from a dog? What the fuck kind of world do we live in, people? Where a dog's got 324 million fucking dollars and a maid, for Christ's sakes. Someone's, ah. anyway, <laughs> thought that was fucking fascinating, people. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. Someone should take that dog out. Someone should, you know. Who gets the money if there are no dogs left? Then what happens to the money, you know? If there isn't a Gunther 5, what happens to the $324 million that this dog has somehow made off of art and real estate? Who gets it? Someone tell me, please. Let me know how these things work. I don't have any comprehension of how money works. So I don't have any because I don't get it. I thought you just do things and people give you a lot of money, but that doesn't seem to be how it works. It seems like you got to be a dog or you got to commit crimes against humanity in case you want to get any, uh, any fucking money, you know? That's just how I feel about it. Let me know how you feel. Like and subscribe and also check out the comments. All right. <laughs> or leave a comment. <laughs> Let's do this list, okay? This was just it for the holiday season. I was catching up on whether or not I can see my family and loved ones for the holiday season, you know. I was listening to the uh, the media and the government to uh, trying to figure out, you know. I just want them to control my life. So I was checking in with them to see if is it possible to go see my loved ones for the uh, the holiday season or if uh, or if that's not okay, you know, cuz I want to be a good I want to be a good citizen. I'd hate to uh, you know, I'd hate to gum up the works just because I want to see somebody I love. I'd hate to do that. But anyway, here I found a list, people. I found a list, and it seems like it might be fun to do. So let's do it here on the podcast, all right? I found a list of the 35 places you are most likely to get COVID, okay? The 35 places you are most likely to get COVID. Now, I didn't know you could go to 35 different places. I thought there were like maybe four or five places. Like you're either at home or you're outside, uh, you know, or you're at a a restaurant, a bar. You're inside somewhere that isn't your home, right? That's like three places. Sporting event and taco truck. Those are about the five places that I know of. But apparently there are 35 places you can go. Then you shouldn't because if you go to these places, you are most likely to catch COVID here. All right? All right. So number 35 is taking a walk. You know, don't don't take a walk cuz you're likely you're likely to get covid. 
the 35th most likely place to get COVID is taking a walk. Hey, a nice walk outside is a great way to clear your head during this stressful pandemic, but it's still important to follow social distancing and mask guidelines in your area to prevent the spread. Because you might get the, you might get COVID taking a walk. That's 35. Number 34 is hiking. Okay. I don't, how is that different than taking a walk? You're further away in the woods. You'd think those two would be flip-flopped, you know? Taking a walk, other people can be around. But usually if you're taking a hike, other people aren't around you. You know, you're in the woods. So I feel like those numbers should be flip-flopped and also isn't it the same fucking thing. Number 33, again, going to a state park or other outdoor areas. Isn't that the same kind of thing as taking a walk (laughs) or taking a hike? Go into a state park. What are you doing in the state park? Walking around outside in the woods or other outdoor areas. Don't go outside. (laughs) Just any outdoor area. The number 32, the 32nd most likely place to get COVID. I don't know if those words flowed together well, but they sound, you get what I'm saying. Number 32 is getting gas. Okay. Getting gas. So don't do that. (laughs) Number 31 is shopping at the farmer's market, okay? Again, don't go outside. Don't support your local farmer's market either because you could get sick and die. Number 30, walking through downtown. Isn't that taking a walk? Again, isn't it the same fucking thing? (laughs) This list is insane. Number the 29th most likely place to get COVID is browsing at the grocery store. Not shopping at the grocery store, but browsing. Don't do any browsing. Go there with purpose. Know what you're going to get and get the fuck out of there as fast as you possibly can. (laughs) Number 28 is waiting in line for to-go food, which is, you know, again, being outside. 27 is going to school. Hey, you don't need an education. You're going to die if you do. All right, don't get educated because you're going to end up dead. (laughs) 26 is taking your kids to the playground. All right, again, it's just like they just keep repeating. It's just different ways of saying don't go outside and don't do anything fun. Going swimming is on here. Waiting in a doctor's office. That's the 24th most likely place to get COVID. Going to an art museum, number 23. Visiting a library. (laughs) Shopping at a retail store hosting an event outdoors, all right? Don't host any events outdoors because you're likely to get COVID there. During air travel, how about that, people? You all think you're safe on planes? You ain't. There's COVID and snakes, all right? Be careful. There's goddamn snakes on the plane and COVID. COVID snake. The King COVID snake. (laughs) Getting a haircut, getting your nails done. Going to a theme park. Playing a team sport. Play by yourself, all right? Get a get a basketball and throw it at the wall. And do, don't be around anybody ever, you know? Just play by yourself, all right? Team sports are dangerous. Attending a sporting event is even more dangerous than playing a sport. Going to the gym, also bad. Staying at a hotel, also bad. Going to a house of worship. I believe that is church. Don't do that. An indoor baby or bridal shower. So this to me says you can have an outdoor baby or bridal shower. But if you remember a few numbers back, they said don't host any outdoor events, right? Hosting an event outdoors is the 20th most likely place to get COVID. And then you come down here and it's fucking, uh, you know, The 10th most likely place is an indoor baby or bridal shower. So what? they're just trying to stir people up and get them afraid to do just about goddamn anything. Eating indoors, eating at a buffet. What is the difference? Eating. (laughs) Don't eat. You'll get COVID. Going on a trip with your friends or family is the 7th most likely place to get COVID. All right? Dinner at a friend's house inside. But you can't do it outside either. Remember? It's just, they're just trying to confuse everybody. They're saying, don't, you can't, they say, 
<laughs> now I'm all confused too. They're saying, don't do anything outside. And it's like, okay. And then you scroll down and then they're like, hey, don't do anything inside either. And it's like, well, I thought you told me not to do stuff outside, but I can't do it inside. Like, no, you can't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Working in an office, going to a wedding, hugging a friend is the third most likely place to get COVID. How about hugging an enemy, people? How about you hug the people you hate from now on so you can stay clear of COVID? That's probably the good move. Just hug people you don't like, and then you won't get COVID. Number two, visiting your local bar. God damn it. The one place you like to go and have some fun. That's the number the number two most likely place to get to COVID. And the number one most likely place to get COVID-19 is hanging with a sick person. Imagine that. Imagine being around somebody with COVID is the most likely place you can get COVID. My God, that list really helped me. It seems like it's about a year and a half too late or something like that. Almost two years too late. But now we all know, people, the 35 most likely places to get sick and die. So just don't go there. Okay? Don't do anything. Don't do anything indoors. Don't do anything outdoors. Definitely don't hug your friends. That's very likely to get COVID. All right? Terrible. Terrible shit going on. All right. Good Lord, let's get you the animal video clip of the week and get you on your way. I think we've had some fun today, right? Did y'all have fun? I hope y'all had fun. I had fun. So, it's the best I could do. Anyway, animal video clip of the week. You know, it's been, uh, I'm still missing. Listen, guys, if you guys have access to any newer tiger videos, like tiger attacks or just tigers doing cool shit, hunting, all that sort of stuff. Let me know. I feel like I'm in a tiger video drought lately. Tigers are lions. I like the big cat videos. I like when they're ripping people apart. It's just more fun. It's just more fun. I did rewatch one of, uh, you know, just for nostalgic purposes of a lion latching onto a dude's hand because he stuck it in the fucking lion cage. You know, it's rare a lion. That's what's fun about them. It's rare that lions and tigers, I mean, sometimes they got to hunt and they got to eat, right? They kill people for that, but rarely are they to blame. It's usually somebody fucking around. So that's what that dude was doing. It was great. It's just funny to hear people scream. Like, (laughs) I don't know if you guys enjoy that, but death curdling screams, I find very entertaining. You know, I don't know why. I just do. (laughs) Because it's just like, Especially with this dude who stuck his hand in the fucking lion cage. You know what I mean? The way he screamed was like, someone please help me. You know? Where he's like, oh no, I'm going to die. And it's like, well, you'd put yourself in that situation. You know? You were fucking with the lion. Well, I don't know. You had it coming. But he got away. You know what I mean? It's always terrible when they get away. Didn't even rip his arm off or anything like that. The guy deserved much worse, in my opinion, but it is what it is, you know. Anyway, found this video of a good old, you know, what is it when, it's not the running of the bulls, but it's at a rodeo, and it's not bull fighting. There was no one fighting the bull. It looked like wherever these hillbillies were, you know, these mindless rednecks, it looked like they were just letting a bull run around in a, in a pen, I guess is what it's called, an arena of some kind. And people just would were getting chased by, they were just trying to get out of the way of the bull, you know? It was great. It was one of the most, and they didn't. That's, that's what made it so great, is they did not get out of the way of the bull. <laughs> the whole objective is just to steer clear of the bull. They, they, you know, this one lady did not do it, but it's in, you know, they fucking get the, the bull all jacked up. They start electrocuting the bull and they're like, hey, go run out in that fucking pit and try and, you know, go after those people. And uh, this lady was not fast. I don't know what she was doing in there. You know, she looked like an office clerk or something like that. Just some lady at a desk who was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to run around with the bull. And she, bro, she was slow as fuck. That bull, I swear to God, it got underneath her. It looked like that lady was floating, 
like she was getting abducted by an alien. That's what it looked like. It looked like she was levitating to the ceiling. It was so goddamn funny. It was like gravity didn't exist. But again, she ended up being fine. Why? Why do people got to end up being fine? It's much more fun when there's destruction involved. <laughs> but in case you want to see this fucking, uh, this lady levitate to the moon <laughs> via a bull ride, you can, uh, the link will be in the description of the podcast, people. That's where I've been putting the links. So check it out if you'd like to. Hey, I think we've had enough fun for today. Right? Yeah, we've had enough fun. We've had a good time. I've had a great time. I hope you've had some fun. Thanks for checking out the podcast, everybody. Once again, go to joekellycomedy.com for all my upcoming shows. And uh, a thank you again to everybody who has checked out Ladies and Leftovers, whether you've streamed it, whether you watched it on YouTube. I appreciate the hell out of it, man. Y'all have been uh, just very, very kind with the feedback. And, uh, you know... I had a goal of getting to 250 subscribers on YouTube by Christmas, and we passed that last week, so I appreciate that, guys. That was fucking, that's real cool. Shooting for 500 now. Let's see if we can get to 500 by Christmas, but uh, thank you for everyone who's been fucking with my shit, checking out the stand-up, listening to the podcast. I appreciate the fuck out of it, man. I hope we had some fun today. I hope we didn't take ourselves too goddamn seriously, and uh, maybe got a couple laughs out of this shit, all right? Thanks for checking it out, everybody. I appreciate your time. As always, take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. And I'll catch you all around very, very soon. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, enjoy enjoy spending time with your loved ones if you have them around. Because they come and go real quick, man. Take care of yourself, all right? Later.